In this situation, I'd say two things are paramount. Firstly, get a good headphone mix because you have to lock in with a click. And having got that, try to groove with a click, treat it as a friend. Uh, the first thing to do, I would say, is uh, program a straight forth to the bar and then maybe add a bit of syncopated percussion so that you've got something to play off so it's not so cold. Maybe something like this one. Playing along with the click is now the rule rather than the exception, and the best players are taking the concept of grooving with the click to amazing heights. This is Weather Report and Sting drummer Omar Hakim. You could play dead on the click, or you can, you can lean behind or before the click. And a, lo and a lot of times, um, I do that to, to incorporate a natural feel into things so that it doesn't sound like a click. But in other words, I always w work within the time frame that's set by the click, but I can make the click feel very natural, you know? Um, so like when I'm doing fills, I might maybe lay behind the click a little to, to, to add tension to it, you know, like... Some... you get a more natural feel. It doesn't sound like the drummer's playing with the click. You can kind of play around with it some. So drummers are now establishing a two-way thing with the machines, and they're very often inspired by the fresh angles that the machines have brought to rhythms. Just look at the way that Omar adds fresh life to a basic funk groove. A lot of times now, on the records that I've been doing, they've been asking me for very solid patterns between the, uh, the kick and the snare. Like, for instance, something like, uh... Now, normally you play... Right? These days, now we're doing... It's, it, the the hi-hat dances more. It makes the straight rhythms that you hear between the kick and the a snare a lot more interesting, but it doesn't take up so much space in the, in the, in the frequency uh, spectrum of a record. As with drummers and drum machines, bass players are having to rethink the parts they play due to the arrival of sequences and MIDI. So whether you're going to play live or in the studio, here are a few ideas on how you can incorporate a sequencer into your band. Do you remember in the first series, when I took a funk bass line and broke it down into its component parts, we had clear notes, mute, pulls, and harmonics. Well, you can take each one of these dynamics, treat them as a separate synth sound, load them into your sequencer, and then play along. Take this continuous pattern, for example. One synth might play the root notes, like this. Then you could play the accents in between with an aggressive synth sound
now we can get really creative and have a bell sound for the harmonics. In between all those phrases, some percussion. And a percussive synth sound for those phrases. Now the whole thing. synth sequences and drum machines can give you access to new sounds and can be a lot of fun. But of course, all this technology can also be very complicated. So we went out and asked two top keyboard players how they managed to cope with the barrage of technology facing the musician nowadays. A player like me doesn't really have to spend that much time trying to come up with sounds, because there are banks and banks and banks of sounds coming down the MIDI pipeline. And all you have to do is audition all of them. <laughs> It'll take a while. And uh, then you pick some and you can always edit and make them fit what you want to do. But I've spent, uh, since uh, the uh, advent of MIDI, I've spent less and less time really trying to come up with brand new sounds. Because there are only few sounds that you really like and that you have to make for yourself. And uh, I still do those, homemade. But on the other hand, there are so many sounds that are available uh, especially for, let's say, for Yaka, like the uh, instrument like the Yamaha or the Expander, Oberheim, that uh, there's no reason for anyone to even spend any time and try and tweak the sound from scratch yourself. You know, you just go through the things that are available and you find something that's close and then you have to know what to tweak to make it perfect for you. With early synthesizer work, you always program your own sounds. Um, now, because there's so many instruments, and so many different technologies that many musicians are employing the use of other people to do the programming so that they can spend their time and spend their mind conceiving. It's hard to do both because it takes a long time to program. By the time you program this thing, you forget what you were gonna program it for or forget the idea that you're gonna have afterwards. So, so usually when I'm working on a record, although I do know basically how to program a DX7. When I'm working on, on a record, I usually have somebody here programming it for me. So that's their secret. They either use presets and just alter them a little bit to get the sounds they want, or they're lucky enough to have somebody else to do the programming for them. But for the rest of us, it's back to the manuals. 